You know what they say, success doesn't happen overnight. But for Matt Zingler and Rolling Loud, success happens at night. You might have seen him on Instagram, a lanky, tatted, rock star looking dude. He's always in the mix with rappers, bodyguards, and a bad bitty. I'm sure he gets mistaken as a member of Avenge Sevenfold or a motocross bro. But Mad Zingler is a nightlife enthusiast who works hard to push artists into the spotlight, even if he has to make the spotlight himself. Matt Zingler was destined to be the rising name in entertainment because his story began in Hollywood. Nope, not that one. Hollywood, Florida. In elementary school, he met his business partner, Tarek Sharif. They instantly bonded over skateboarding, surfing, and music. Even though the pair operate with cunning business skills and market insights, Matt wasn't always necessarily an academic overachiever. He didn't finish high school on time, although he eventually became a bioscience major at the University of Florida. While in high school, Matt and Tariq were constantly throwing parties. They would steal empty kegs and purchase fake IDs in order to build credibility when procuring large amounts of alcohol. They even managed to raise a $5,000 donation for Hurricane Katrina victims, the first time the pair ever saw significant money. As the two gained a reputation with the college party crowd, Matt further pursued the nightlife. He worked as a promoter, bartender, and eventually became a nightclub manager. He and Tarek stayed consistent with their own events, and they were always able to make a small profit. As they continued to see a few bucks from parties, Matt and Tarek realized that they could turn their operations into something more profitable. When Tarek and his girlfriend got hit with an accidental pregnancy, the two friends had all the reason to take their business seriously. In 2010, Dope Entertainment was founded. The first thing that they noticed was that EDM was starting to take off. Other promoters in Miami were booking big name EDM DJs for college parties and were blowing up big time. Matt and Tarek always gravitated towards hip hop and they felt that rappers were not getting enough exposure when it came to the nightlife scene at the time. So they both decided to risk it big. They both invested their entire combined savings of $30,000 and reached out to Rick Ross on Gmail and Twitter. Ross was performing at Florida A&M University, so Matt and Tarek secured him for a nightclub after party. Dope Entertainment took a huge financial hit as the Rick Ross party lost most of its potential attendees to other major events across town. Nonetheless, Rick had a great time with Matt and Tarek, and the pair had come up with a new strategy. Instead of focusing on single events with high risk, they focused on touring with artists in order to profit off of consistent ticket sales. Matt, with all his experience in nightclubs, began to make a keen observation. Rappers were simply not booking shows that often. Hip-hop, for a long period of time, wasn't something that really encouraged a live audience. The experience wasn't as engaging as a rock concert, or the energy wasn't as explosive as an EDM show. So, Matt Zingler and Tarek Sharif decided not to chase an existing market. But instead, they focused on capitalizing on a new and growing one. They turned to a new type of hip-hop movement, and a new type of platform, SoundCloud rappers. As fate would have it, much of the talent was coming out of Florida, and they were creating a new sound that was gaining popularity. Matt and Tarek realized that these young rappers weren't getting booked anywhere because of rap show stigmas, overpriced tickets, lackluster performances, and potentially violent crowds. Following their hearts, Matt and Tarek connected with Currency, XXX Tentacion, Wi Fi's Funeral, Puya, Suicide Boys, Travis Scott, and Post Malone. All were up and coming indie artists at the time. Dope Entertainment got to work and hustled to get their friends' names out there and increase the fan base. 
Matt would promote these artists on every channel he could, as Tarek would chauffeur them around to appearances and shows. They would offer their homes and promotional services to these artists in order to expand the reach of their music. Matt and Tarek would prove to venues that hip-hop was next in line to draw the crowds. After four and a half years of experience building up and promoting the new wave of hip-hop, Matt and Tarek came together to launch Rolling Loud. Matt had intended Rolling Loud to be a large party that would expose and support their Florida-based artists. After linking with multiple investors, they needed to sell 3,000 tickets to confirm and 6,500 tickets to lock in the following year. Matt even went on University of Florida radio to promote the event and give away tickets and wound up crashing the phone lines. In February 2015, Matt and Tarek launched the first Rolling Loud. On paper, it was a bit of an ordeal. They suffered a huge rainstorm delay, numerous technical difficulties, and a complete financial loss. But that's on paper. In person, it was a monumental success. The energy was wild and chaotic, as covered by Yes Jewels on Snapchat. The artists were loving the audience engagement, and the crowd was loving every performance. Everyone involved loved the experience and immediately wanted another. This all helped to confirm the demand for Rolling Loud, despite lack of ROI. That night, it was a given that Rolling Loud was to become an annual event. May 11th through the 13th, three stages. Woo! Three days. Woo! Woo! Uh, Let's talk about how Matt and Tarek are able to make this work. You see, Matt and Tarek have a deep connection and understanding of the current hip-hop community. They keep track of beefs and legal standings to make sure the events are always secure. If performers are currently beefing, they make sure scheduling is precise and the artists don't interfere with one another. They base their selections on sound, talent, and audience engagement. Rolling Loud doesn't pay too much attention to the size of an artist's following because engagement is a better measure of who will actually buy tickets. Zingler focuses on what's going on in clubs and what artists can stand out visually. Tarek focuses on the intangibles, such as quality of sound. But ultimately, they think about the audience. What makes an experience worth it? These choices were key for moments like a surprise Nicki Minaj performance or hosting Meek Mill's first show after a prison stint. Matt has consistent standards for his projects and he's always looking to improve. His intention is to promote the Rolling Loud brand because the appeal can always be converted into investment dollars, no matter how many short-term ups and downs they have. So what brought Matt Zingler all this success. Unsurprisingly, Matt understands the value of hard work. He studies and understands the hip hop market. Regional markets heavily influence the Rolling Loud lineup. Matt and Tarek have big respect for local talent pool and culture. They want to establish a sense of identity with an artist's region and bring that to everywhere they go. They focus on artists that resonate with the crowd with music that you can feel. Matt and Tarek are incredibly adaptive to circumstances. In case they run into problems like late or canceled artists, security issues, or scouting new talent, they're hospitable to their artists, managers, and booking agents. 
In the early days, Mac and Tarek drove around Currency and Big Sean. They let Wi Fi's funeral stay at the house and waited on artists hand and foot. When booking TDE artists, they let them take over and have creative control. Matt and Tarek are insistent on fostering great working relationships. They both place an emphasis on working with the right people who can execute quickly. Once all the right people are in place, they can book artists easily and have everything locked down. Because of Matt Zingler, Tarek Sharif, and Rolling Loud, there's been a shift in the event industry. Hip-hop is now the dominant music out in terms of sales, appeal, and concert attendance. Matt and Tarek are now gatekeepers. They can be responsible for taking an artist that was relatively unknown to a larger audience. Matt's plans for Rolling Loud are reaching far beyond expectation. They've made moves to expand to Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Croatia. Rolling Loud is being franchised into artist management, music labels, and digital media marketing. They've even partnered on nightclubs and have a liquor brand in the works. So what's Matt Zingler's key formula? It goes something like this. One, seek out and align yourself with good talent, regardless of how small they are in the beginning. Two, work hard to help them get shine and exposure. Introduce them to places that you feel they belong. Three, maintain solid relationships with everyone involved. Grow as a team. For a guy focused on nighttime, Matt Zingler knows that now is the right time. It's the right time to support your friends and build their fan base. It's the right time to take the spotlight and show the world how to party. That's what it means to push product. What do you guys think about Matt Singler in a rolling lab? If you have attended the festival, have you had a good time? Have you had a bad time? Was it worth it? Let us know in the comments below. Also, let us know if you agree with the way Matt Singler does things. Hit the subscribe button so that you can see more videos like this one. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we drop new content. One last thing before we let you go. Check out our Instagram and hit the follow button to stay connected to the latest independent artists. If you would like to be featured, send us a DM and tell us why we should feature you. Thank you.